Welcome back to another segment of ACRP TV. Today, our spotlight is on how training has been impacted by COVID. I think the answer is it has been. And we have a great guest with us today, an old friend of ACRP. She's been on the board, uh, editorial board, advisory board for clinical researchers. She's been a great source for uh, us and me at ACRP in the past. I wanna thank Paula Smail. She's a senior systems consultant at the Wexner Medical Center at Ohio State University. Paula, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. All right, let's just jump right in and start the big question. About a year ago, where you and I are talking end of February 2021, about a year ago, everything changed or was about to. So let's start big. How has training been impacted by COVID? Well, for us, for me, for me specifically, I do the electronic medical record training for researchers there at Ohio State um, doing clinical research specifically. And we typically do it with um, instructor led. So I'm in a computer lab and everyone's in front of their own computer and I kind of guide them through the workflows. Well, when COVID hit, we couldn't do that anymore. So we were all sent home. And so now I had to take this training that was in person and make it remote training. So we did that um, using WebEx at the time. And you know, everyone across the board was having trouble. And, you know, there was a lot of obviously demand for remote um, communications and meetings and all that stuff. So early on there were, it was a little turbulent, I would say, because so many people wanted it and, and we kind of got to capacity there. But um, there was one class I had to reschedule because of, of the issues. But over time, all those kinks got worked out and then we transitioned from WebEx into Teams. And so it went from being um, a class that was very interactive to me pretty much demonstrating how the system worked. And then it put a little bit more onus and ownership on our new hires to be able to get into this playground environment after the fact and then go through the workflows that I showed them. So where do you think we're at today? We are in this transition period for about a year. Hard to say how long the COVID pandemic is going to be around, certainly for a little while, probably the rest of the year or a good chunk of it. But where are we today compared to where we were, say, six months ago? Have we gotten our sea legs? Is, is training being conducted pretty adequately now? Yeah, and, and at Ohio State, we have converted a lot of our training from instructor-led into e-learning, and this was happening before COVID. So I was in the work queue before COVID happened to ultimately transition into e-learning. So actually this month, I was able to start working on that process. So I feel like um, we got better overall, um, not just me and what I do specifically, but we got better at making videos and um, you know, doing short training seg segments and being really creative, um, not only creative, but I would say productive in the ability to, to push these tools out to our end users. So a year ago, the industry pivoted. It sounds like uh, I my impression from you and others is the industry has done a pretty good job considering what everyone was up against last year. So let's take it one step further and a year from now and say COVID is relatively gone or at least significantly mm -hmm. mitigated. Do you think we're gonna go back to the way we were doing things before or are we gonna see some permanent changes in how we conduct training? I think we're definitely gonna see permanent changes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to the point of your question too, we typically do post-training evaluations to see how well we did and what we can do to improve. And so once we went to this virtual remote training, we still continue to do that. So I went in to see the results of our training evaluations for research and compare those to training evaluations after COVID. And I confess I was a little bit nervous about that to see what kind of feedback we would get. And honestly, I would say they're slightly better in the virtual environment than in person. Now that's not to say that some people certainly do like to be in person and have that hands-on with someone right by them. But overall, they were actually pretty good. And there was some pretty good feedback and I'm always open to constructive criticism. Um, there's some things that I've done differently with training, um, such as a lot of the feedback wanted the playground environment before the class to be able to get in there and, and look around and see what they were going to be doing. So um, I was able to start sending that link out ahead of time. And there was some, um, feedback about the uh, the workbook, the exercise workbook that we provided in terms of giving it a little bit more um, screenshots and a little bit more step-by-step. -step. So 
the feedback that we've gotten since COVID, I've been able to incorporate that. So um, I, I feel like people like it. I think people like the convenience of it. Um, I, I think that's the big thing. It's convenient, it's flexible. And even though it does put more of that onus back on the new hire, I think that um, generally speaking, it's well-received. Fantastic. Well, no criticism here. You did a great job. Thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Really appreciate the chance to talk with you again. This has been our ACRP TV spotlight on how training has been impacted by COVID. And we've been talking with the great Paula Smales. Paula, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Michael.